on there guys good evening it is the earth master here on the live stream on this friday evening it is party night right for quite a few folks out there not me i'll be staying home safe and sound it is october 8th 2021 uh 706 p.m california time and uh, latest quake on the earthquake 3d globe is a 2.8 way up in the alaska region kind of a deeper earthquake at 54 kilometers into that portion of alaska and let's go ahead and check out the activity taking place out here first i'd like to jump into the uh, movement once again along the cascadia subduction zone this activity is no joke folks there's still a lot of trimmer kicking up this is the activity uh that's taken place since 2000 uh since uh September, september 20th let's see if i can spit that out so we're looking at uh oh what do we got there a little bit over three weeks or so somewhere around there almost 10,000 epicenters of trimmer you can see all the uh, bunched up movement mostly to the north around the seattle area and a massive massive amount here into northern california stretching down uh, underneath parts of the sacramento valley almost all the way down here to chico where i live pretty crazy so southern end of the cascadia get, getting in on quite a bit of movement and looking back throughout all these charts and whatnot um, we haven't really seen a lot of movement into the into this area right here where it's absent of activity just we haven't we don't really see too much trimmer in this region and i'm not 100 percent certain why the only thing i can think of is that uh well, there's a, definitely a, a whole lot of stress and build up here, kind of like in a bow shaped um, format, if you will. You got to think of some of this area up here and down here is, is subducting and creating slippage, you know, as far as the trim, trimmer goes. What's going on up here? Are we kind of bowing this plate a little bit? Or maybe in, in this type of fashion? I, it, it's, it's hard to figure out why it's doing this. It just doesn't fill in as much in this area of the Cascadia as areas to the north and to the south here. So it's just, it's, it's been like that. Sometimes we get events here in this region, but nothing like, definitely nothing like what we see uh, up here to the north and the south. But either way, a, a massive amount of trimmer taking place since the 20th of uh, September. Now today, today's activity... Let's go ahead and check out, uh, let me refresh this just to make sure. There we go. 651 epicenters. We're climbing back up again, folks, on the trimmer. Yesterday it was, oh man, let me let me check, 400 and something. Yep, 464. So uh, today we're looking at an increase by a couple hundred into uh, Northern California once again, the very southern end of the Cascadia, stretching uh, underneath the North American continent here. And also some movement up around the Seattle area and the Vancouver Island ranges up here. So that's a whole lot just for one day once again, folks. And if you look at this map, kind of this chart right here, you can see an increase over the last couple years or so of uh, densely calculated trimmer um, on any given in any given year. And uh, I'm kind of curious to see how long this is going to go on here. I did email a uh, seismologist with the USGS, kind of asking them about this. He's associated with the uh, uh, with this type of uh, type of uh, um, trimmer or earthquake events, I should say, and kind of asked him about uh, you know what he thinks. And anyway, he's he's off on maternity leave until January of next year, so not a good time for him to be absent with all this activity but either way uh quite a bit of movement uh, taking place here folks i don't know if they put out any type of uh press releases or or whatnot sometimes they do um looks like fall winter 2021 let's see what they got here looks like they did a couple days ago uh, looks like, yeah, they, they're agreeing that it started right around the 22nd of September. Uh, I kind of went back to the 20th. So they're stating here um, the 2021 ETS epo uh, episodic trimmer is not supposed to start until about 14 months after the last one. 
uh, which would make it uh, starting sometime in December of this year. So we're pretty early. Uh, yet it looks as if something has started, already started, as of today, significant tremor has been ongoing in the central Puget Sound area, but th that's not the only area. Uh, typically, we feel that if tremor goes on every day for 10 days, then a real significant ETS uh, is underway. So it now seems that this is the case. Uh, let's see here. But See, but they're leaving out the entire Cascadia. Yes, we get it. Stuff goes on up here. But this is happening down in the southern end, too. This is a massive event that's going on. Uh, let's get back here and see what they say. Uh, uh, this batch started in a similar way to many previous ones. The earliest trimmer is fairly weak and down dip to the east, and then moves up dip to the west, and then spreads slowly to the north and or south. In the current case, it seems to be moving slowly north, reaching just north of the Olympic Peninsula, and even with a small patch jumping across Vancouver Island as today. There is even scattering of trimmer locations in the central Vancouver Island area. Okay, so where is where is the mention about Northern California? Uh, so how unusual is such an early start? And is there any significance to it? It is pr pretty unusual, though. There has been at least one recorded case where part of a normal uh, event region had trimmer only about... Um, a year since the previous one, right? Because every 14 months you're supposed to have this type of event. Um, I will not stick my neck out at this time and try to predict how this may progress since there is every chance that it will quit in a day or two and not really get going for another two months. So that's this is someone's, um, just their, their thought. Within a week or so, trimmer catalog will be updated. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, no mention of anything about it, you know, producing or or leading up to a Cascadia earthquake. No mention of that at all. They're just saying, well, this is normal. It happens every 14 months, but this one's a little early. But, you know, they, I don't know. I, I know they don't want to fear monger. I don't want to fear monger, but there's definitely something big brewing out here um, along the Cascadia. It's just, it's not calming down. I think if anything, it's building up and really ramping up along the Cascadia subduction zone. This is something to watch pretty closely, folks. I mean, if we're going to have a big one out here, it's been 321 years since the last major full rupture of the Cascadia. Uh, we haven't seen a partial rupture in a little bit either. So who's to say we're not looking at an 8.1, 8.2 magnitude quake on the southern end of the Cascadia real soon with all this tremor activity that's taken place. So uh, continuing to monitor this, this region, and we'll see what happens. Uh, also coming up here real soon, me and Missy Mimi's are going to be uh, checking out some areas along the Oregon coastline very soon. Um, <clears throat> looking at some uh, tsunami deposits from the uh, past historical um, mega quakes up here in the Pacific Northwest that, uh, of course, uh, sent massive uh, tsunamis inland. And there's uh, definitely deposits of that in certain areas of Oregon. So we're going to go check that out here pretty soon uh, as an uh, on-location type uh, event for the channel. Quite a bit of movement into the Indonesia area, as well as Solomon Islands and Tonga and Fiji. But check out, man, gosh darn it. Look at this area up here once again, folks. Very quiet into the Tokyo region and northward along the trench area. Just, man, quiet. We did see a little oddball earthquake activity up uh, in the uh, Australia region once again. This area, 4.9 in Australia. Uh, is west of where we had seen that larger quake strike. Uh, let's see, when was that? Down here a few weeks ago, down near Melbourne, where they had that 5.9, uh, one of the largest earthquakes in the Australia area, Victoria. Uh, and Melbourne sits down here. 5.9 felt all over, even uh, I think uh, cl close to around the Sydney area. But this earthquake, this 4.9, much further to the north and to the west. Not as big, but uh, still a little sign of some increasing movement uh, with the Pacific plate pressure heading to the west. All this activity, this deeper movement here is something to watch as well, folks. We've got a, lo a lot of deep earthquake activity uh, that's kind of kicking up uh, earlier, way earlier today in the Fiji Islands region, 4.1 at 539 kilometers and some of these other earthquakes very deep as well 
We did see some uh, movement down here in the West Indian Art Antarctica Ridge, 4.6, kind of an odd area. We just, like I said, we've seen all this movement here to the west kicking up in some areas that we just don't see a lot of earthquake activity in. Uh, let's see what else we got. 5.2 in the Indonesia area. This one's kind of deep as well. This Java Trench, a major play player in producing some uh, significant earthquakes. Around the Iraq er or Iran, 5.1. Near this area, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. If I did, uh, probably wouldn't be good. South Sandwich Islands getting in on some activity as well. There's a mosquito. Can't stand those things. Uh, you think with the colder weather, they would have been gone, but they're not. And it's buzzing around me. Uh, there's the uh, South Sandwich earthquakes down here into the trench region. A couple fours, or a four way over here around Drake Passage, but the fives kicking up in the uh, South Sandwich Islands trench region right there. So a little bit of increase in activity in that region. Some deep movement, a pair of fours at 200, 200 kilometers into the uh, South America area, Peru Chile Trench, and a, a pretty good uptick in earthquake activity along the Puerto Rico Trench region. You can see some deeper activity very close here to the uh, this little subduction zone and also some activity just to the southeast of Puerto Rico. Haven't seen too much movement in this region, a 4.8 followed up by a 3.6. So uh, some dynamic uh, plate movement taking place in that area. Very complicated region here when it comes uh, to trying to figure out exactly uh, what's gonna happen. All I know is uh, it's uh, definitely a very seismically hazardous area. Uh, let's check out the Cascadia since we're still seeing a lot of that tremor up here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, as far as surface quaking goes, we did see a 2.7 right smack dab on the uh, Cascadia subduction zone mega thrust area. Uh, 9.2 kilometers for this earthquake. So I, I tell you what, folks, pressure is building in this region. Also some further movement south of Mount Shasta. Looks like some surface quaking uh, due to the tremor underneath. 2.5 near Dunsmuir and a 1.2. I believe that came in last night, but uh, still up there on the map. Off the coast of Oregon, pretty quiet when it comes to surface quaking along the Cascadia at the moment. Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, all see Rainier, seeing a couple of small microquakes in that area, and also up here outside of Oak Harbor, a deep uh, tremor earthquake, 1.9 at 26 kilometers below the surface. A trail of activity. Through Northern California, stretching across the Sierra Nevadas, uh, Antelope Valley area, and also Mono Lake, uh, still seeing some movement, some microquake activity kicking up in this region. Also down here around the Long Valley Super Volcano, still showing some activity. Ridgecrest dropping off, though, in the earthquake department, as well as Southern California. It's just been very odd. We've seen uh, a diminishing and a noticeable diminishing amount of earthquake activity south here of the Garlock Fault Structure. But areas north definitely um, an increase. Um, so I'm not for sure exactly what's going on. I know the Garlock Fault is something to watch, folks. It's definitely something to watch. And it may be possibly, um, I, I guess I could say pre um, preventing some of that movement and pressure down here in the south, but I'm not 100% certain, but it's something to watch. This area has definitely a, got potential to create a large quake uh, on that Garlock Fault structure, uh, which could trigger the San Andreas Fault down here in the south uh, if things would, uh, if they were to go as uh, I think they would go. Let's hope it doesn't happen, but uh, watching this area pretty closely. It's just been odd. Past several days, we've seen just very minimal earthquake activity south of the Scarlock Fault structure, when normally um, it's pretty active. Uh, what else we got? Some movement uh, up north of that uh, Garlock zone along the San Andreas Fault, including a little earthquake in the Bay Area, 1.6, uh, 4 kilometers south-southwest of the San Francisco Zoo. Woo! What else we got here, folks? Inland into the uh, Idaho area, Sawtooth Fault System, and Yellowstone National Park, a trail of earthquake activity. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, Yellowstone seismographs here, and you can see uh, a little bit of movement, but not much. There's not much at all, in, in fact, to uh, discuss about Yellowstone here. This, I'm going to have to see what that is. We'll check out the other graphs here in a minute. Uh, some microquakes up here earlier throughout the day, this region. Um... Not for sure. Maple Creek, 
I look at other seismograph stations within the region to see if this is actually indeed, uh, uh, you know, some type of activity or if it's just um, potentially interference. I don't know, running a generator, a tractor, who knows what, but it doesn't look like it's shown up on any of the localized stations, uh, just only there on Maple Creek. So kind of looks just a little bit like interference. All right, folks, we're going to jump off here. Have a good night. Uh, stay safe out there. It is Friday night. There's a lot of crazy people out there, let me tell you. Have a good night, everyone.